The equity markets had quite a week last week. So where do you think they'll go from here? How do things look now? Are they looking better than last week? Or are they getting worse? This past week, the Dow Jones Industrial Average closed up 2.65%, the S&P 500 up 4.12%, and the tech-heavy NASDAQ Composite closed up 4.91%. So I like what I see here. I like the fact that technology is heading up faster than the Dow Jones Industrial Average stodgy old value stocks. But what about the ARK Innovation ETF, ARKK? Well, when I first looked at this, I said, oh boy, this is not a good look. I mean, you know, you've heard me in my previous videos talk about how riskier stocks tend to lead out of a bottom and perform much better than, for example, the Dow Jones Industrial Average or the S&P 500. But in this case, over the past week, ARK Innovation has gone actually down a little bit, 1.76%. Well, let's take a look at the details here and see if there's really anything to worry about. Now, I'm going to point you at three places in this graph. I want to look at this big drop on July 26th. I want to look at this second big drop on July 28th. And then the third big drop on July 29th. Let's focus on those and see if we can better understand what caused this to happen. Well, first of all, if we look at Teladoc, you can see that Teladoc dropped 11.16%, and actually it was down about 23% during the day uh, on Thursday. But you can see that big drop here. So that that's one of ARK's biggest holdings. So that helps explain the dip we saw on July 28th. What about on July 29th? Well, Roku, another very large ARK holding, dropped 26.36%. So you can see how these contributed to, to this drop and to this drop. Now we'll talk about this drop a little bit later, but Coinbase dropped significantly back here uh, to, to help with some of this, not all of it, but certainly Coinbase was a contributor here. And what about the rest of the ARK innovation ETFs, like the ARK genomic ETF? Well, that one's kind of gone nowhere, down 1.05% for the week. What about the ARK F? fintech innovation ETF. Well, that one, you know, kind of flat for the week. But again, there's a drop here, probably caused by Coinbase and some of the other blockchain-oriented fintech technologies. What about next generation internet ETF? Again, Coinbase and some of the other blockchain technologies here probably caused this. And you can see that here in the price of Coinbase. So what about some of the other ARK innovation ETFs? Did they all perform bad? If they did, that would have me very concerned. Well, ARC-Q, the Autonomous Tech and Robotics ETF, has performed extremely well. In fact, it beat all of the major indices with a 5.61% return for the week. ARC Space Exploration and Innovation. This one closed up, again, beating all the major indices, up 5.4%. And finally, ARC's 3D Printing ETF printed some money last week up 4.8% for the week. This is all very good. Let's talk a little bit about how markets act when they come out of the bottom. This will give you perspective on why you shouldn't try to time the equity markets, but it will also show you what these market bottoms have in common. So what are we looking at here? Well, I've taken the S&P 500 going back to the very beginning of 1993. I'm using the ETF SPY, and that's the black line, and you can see how it moved up here. We had the dot-com bubble burst back here in 99 to 2000. We had the big financial crisis back here in 2007 to 2009. We had the pandemic and so on. But what have I done? Why are all these arrows on here? Well, the green arrows are basically the major trends. So this had sort of a major trend up here. And what I did is I tried to draw the green arrow so it would run parallel to this. Same thing here, a little bit less of a slope, but I drew the trend line here. And then this long run up here, very long trend line. Now, what are the red arrows? Well, the red arrows are the slope coming out of the bottom. So you notice that while this was going up at a certain rate here, when it, even a slight bottom here, this thing really shoots up coming out of these bottoms. You see that these lines are much more vertical meaning they're coming out really fast. On every single one of these bottoms, these red arrows point almost upward, not, not straight up, but very steep compared to these trend lines. 
you can see it here, you can see it here. And then that then this is the pandemic, you can see it here. This is where we are today. And you can see if I draw a red arrow along this line coming out of the bottom, it shoots almost straight up. So this gives me some comfort level that we're at least seeing an interim bottom for right now. Now you can argue like back here in 2000, we had a bottom there, we had a bottom there, a bottom there, a bottom there, and finally the real bottom. But those kinds of things will happen. But I'm just showing you this so you can understand how these things act. And definitely don't try to time the market. You can't call these quick enough. You know what will happen? Most investors will, will sell on the way down somewhere, usually near the bottom. That's when they really start getting scared and they start selling. But even if they did it halfway there, then how do they know when to get back in? You know, they typically don't until the market has really gone past its initial recovery stage. And that's way too late. Now, several videos ago, I talked about our proprietary bottom analysis metrics. And what do those look like? Well, I'll go over this quickly. The black line is the price of the S&P 500 SPY. The orange line is an initial bottom indicator. And if you remember from my last video, I talked about how when this gets up here to 100% like this, or near 100%, and this confidence level, the dashed line, gets up near 100%, that's an indication of a potential bottom. Now, when I say potential bottom, it's not a confirmed bottom until this blue line, which is the confirming indicator, gets up here uh, also at a very high level. Now, in my previous videos, I said I'd really like to see it higher than this, and it did get higher than that here, and the confidence level was very high here. So this was about 90%. I think this was 94, 95%. So I said that qualifies as a, a bottom confirmation. So the bottom would have been back here. And you can see what the S&P has done since then. It kind of went sideways to down for a little bit. And then it shot up more recently in the last week or so. But what's happening with the confirming bottom indicator? Well, it's now sitting at 100%. And this number, I think, is somewhere around 94% or so. So this is really good. This is really good confirmation. Well, how do we look from a buying pressure and selling pressure perspective? Well, let's look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. You can see, and you remember from my previous videos, the selling pressure stayed stubbornly above the buying pressure all the way to here, even though this was kind of trying to rally here and then it was very kind of weak here. That's probably what caused it. The selling pressure was above the buying pressure all, all the way across here pretty much. And then more recently, the buying pressure has moved up above the selling pressure. And you can see we had a very nice rally here as a result. Let's look at the S&P 500 or SPY. Again, similar picture, selling pressure above the buying pressure, a little bit of a flip here. Uh, again, selling pressure above the buying pressure. And then finally, the buying pressure moved above the selling pressure. This is good. What about the NASDAQ 100? Now the NASDAQ 100, remember, has been presenting a little bit better of a picture, which is very encouraging at a bottom because you want tech stocks and more innovation stocks and higher risk stocks to come out of the bottom first. And in fact, that's what was happening here. You can see while the S&P and the Dow selling pressures were above the buying pressure, the buying pressure was above here. Now it flipped here, went above again, flipped again, and now is above the selling pressure again. This looks really good. Now, what about ARK Innovation? That was a little bit of a cause for concern. So, you know, ARK Innovation was doing kind of what the NASDAQ was doing. And then ARK was above the selling pressure here. The buying pressure was above the selling pressure. But based on the last couple of days, the selling pressure has shot up here. Now, is this something to be concerned about? Well, let's talk about that. Here is a graph showing some price metrics, some proprietary price metrics that we created a long time ago. And basically what you're looking at, uh, the black line is the price of the ARK Innovation ETF. And you can see it, it bottomed out here and has been trying to rally. But what gives me encouragement here is this purple line is the slope of the price. So you want this to be heading higher and ideally you want it above zero, which is this line right here. So you want this purple line to be heading higher and be above the zero line. So you can see it's been playing with zero here, but not really staying above it. Now I want to show you something else. This blue line that I call the opportunity indicator, it's a really good indication 
when this line starts moving up and heading higher, and especially when it, when it keeps heading higher and gets above this zero crossing line that I've drawn here. So you can see that wasn't happening back here. Yes, it was moving up here and arc went up, and then it went kind of flat here and arc fell. But then ever since back here, it's been kind of going up except for this one little jog here. But in general, this line has been heading higher. This is good. This is really good. And then the orange line is the slope of the risk. You want the slope of the risk to be heading lower, which in fact it's doing. So I like what I see here. This I'm not concerned about ARC Innovation yet. There were some earnings announcements last week that caused some of the key holdings to drop significantly. And I think that's what we're struggling with here. Now let's take a look at what's been on everybody's mind, inflation. So why are we looking at treasuries? Well, treasuries, at least at the longer end, give you an indication of what the markets are thinking about inflation. And you can see that uh, these intermediate duration treasuries, IEI, bottomed out back here and have been, you know, rallying. They kind of fell back here, but have in general been rallying since way back here, almost at the beginning of June. And what do we see here? Well, we see the buying pressure above the selling pressure kind of fell back here. And now again, the buying pressure is above the selling pressure. So this is good. What about long duration treasuries? TLT has an average duration of 20 years. So again, bottom here, nice rally. Buying pressure above the selling pressure, never actually flipping until here. And now we've got some back and forth. So we'll have to see how this plays out. But I really like what I see here. So everything went down since the beginning of the year. Safe haven assets, treasuries went down. Equities, risk assets went down. The only things that went up were energy and gold. But now treasuries and equities are both going up. I like this. Now what's happening with gold, the quintessential inflation hedge? Well, you can see the price dropped here, bottomed here, and it looks like it's trying to come back. I don't know what this means. I'm leery of gold because it's really not correlated to much of anything. Uh, but you can see the selling pressure peaked out here, came back. The buying pressure is now above the selling pressure. I don't know if this is a relief rally or if this is going to sustain. Too early to tell. I really don't have a, any kind of view into this right now. And then cryptocurrencies, what's happening? Now, you've heard me say before, these are not an inflation hedge. They're not a digital gold. They're an innovation risk asset. So just like any other innovative company, this is an innovative risk asset. And you can see that selling pressure really went up here and these kind of bottomed out. And then since then, they've kind of been going sideways, maybe a little bit of a rally here. But you can see that the buying pressure went up here, kind of came down. Again, the buying pressure above the selling pressure. And then they just flipped recently, even though there was a little bit of a run up here. So we'll see what happens. But the longer this goes sideways, the bigger the move is going to be when it either goes up or it goes down. And on the GBTC or Bitcoin price metrics, let's take a look at these. So again, black lines, the price of GBTC. And again, I like what I see here. The price slope is moving higher. Now it has a long way to go to get to zero. So this has got a ways to go to cross zero and become positive. But the blue line, again, just like in that previous case I showed you, is moving higher and is just cross zero here. So I like this and the orange line, the, the slope of the risk is, is moving down. These are all good indicators. So we'll just have to wait and see how this plays out going forward. But I like what I see here as well. At the end of last week, many investors were negative on equities. Then what happened? Well, as we reviewed, the Dow, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ all went up dramatically this past week. So one week later, all the major indices are up 4 to 5% from where they were last week. And we could just be at the beginning of a major rally, or not. You've heard the pros say it many times, don't try to time the markets. Allocate according to your risk tolerance instead of your age. And then save like a maniac, take the long view of 10 to 20 years, and you'll be just fine in the long run. I'm Calvin Rose, and thank you for watching today. If you like this video, please hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell so you won't miss an upcoming episode of Invest Smarter. That's all for now. Hey, thank you for watching. 
If you enjoy these videos, there are several ways on Patreon for you to support the channel and access exclusive content, including special posts on the markets, educational materials about how to select investments and manage your portfolio, and at the investor level, you'll have full access to our natural selection stock rankings so you can evaluate individual stocks or market sectors that fit your investment style. Check out the link at the pinned comments below and thank you for your support.